Keys Phone Micro SD, a knowledge empowerment system for empowering under resourced locations worldwide, presented at the Niskayuna Heartbeat Rotary in January of 2022 by Frank Quinn, the president of the E Rotary of Upstate New York. Imagine if Rotary sponsored a lending library with this content in every city worldwide. Well, yeah. well so that since this recording just started, <laughs> here's five steps. The general idea is uh, get a micro SD card with content into a phone in a remote location. And we can review that later. So um, did, did those steps kind of make sense? All we really want is this phone at the end over here. And what we, what we want is that micro SD card inside the phone. And then one time we have to show somebody, usually the, a child, how to, how to use that card. Once they know, they can show everybody else. And the problem I had is um, one of the problems is I'm not going to be in the room to explain it to them. And it, so what I had to do is learn how to build a simple Android app that just had little videos that tries to explain these ideas. So hopefully what would happen is if they installed that app, they could watch the, the four little one minute videos and that would be enough for them to understand how to use it. And if they didn't understand, they could just watch them again and again. So it wouldn't be that they had one chance and too much information. It would be they, they pick the one little video that they want and watch it again and again. Okay. So that's the general idea. And so far it seems to work um, in terms of no resources or minimum resources in resource poor locations. And then what we'll do is we'll show you. So we created <clears throat> this little Android app. And he, I'm going to show you the videos, the one minute videos. And the idea is if, if we could get that app onto the phone, then they can actually watch the examples. Uh, and it turns out you don't have to go through an, an app store online. You can distribute apps on the micro SD card and they can install them. So I, I put this one on the card and then on the local phones, I've already installed it. And so far they're not the best videos, but I'm, if I practice, there'll be better videos. Okay, so let's jump back to here. And all the other pictures don't really matter. We'll watch the videos. And it, it turns out, if you ever want to, you can share, you can put your Android phone onto your computer screen and use your mouse and your keyboard to control it using this little free program called uh, Screen Copy. So if I go to Screen Copy and I say Screen Copy, it should show me my phone. And how do I get this thing out of the way? Let me go here and go back. So hopefully what you're seeing on my screen is a phone. Um, and this is one of the phones I set up using keys. On the front screen, there's on the bottom, there's a bunch of apps that would be for teaching the children how to use graphics or word processing or, or uh, how to do geography with maps. So there's a set of like 10 normal apps that they could use if they wanted. And then here's the little app we built, which only shows them videos. So I'm going to click on that app and hopefully it'll show up on your screen. So if it's working, you can see four little examples of videos and a link to YouTube and a link to a website. If they're in, no internet land, then YouTube and uh, the bottom link won't work, but the little videos were, so will work. So if I touch first little video, Keys, knowledge and power. oops, it's actually talking, but my connection doesn't do audio onto your um, screen. So it's going through the same example that I just went through those five little steps with a bunch of words. So the person could watch it once or twice or three times if, if, or if they wanted to explain it to their friend, they wouldn't have to remember. They could just say, watch this one minute video. So it's going to go through those steps. Then I'm going to say, okay, go back. Let's see if I can, oh, it's covered. There we go. The top of my screen is covered. Um, then I'll watch video number two. So this would be, uh, how do you get to the educational content? So the first little video just described what I told you uh, about making a card or sending a card. The second one is uh, how do you get to the educational material? 
So you, you have to get inside the card. So this will get you inside the card. And then there's a, there's a thing that says list one and list two. If you touch list one and list two, it'll let you, it shows it to you in Chrome. And what it's doing is showing you all the content of the card in two different ways. So this is kind of like Windows. You can look in little folders until you find the content you want. When you click on it, it plays the video with sound and you can watch it for as long as you want. Then we'll go back and we'll pick the other list. So you've got, this is list one. It's just a different way of looking at the same thing. This way just lists it on one big screen going up and down. So the, the top part is what folders are available in the card. And then as you go down, you see the contents of every folder. So you could do ESL, like this one is going to be uh, Aesop's Fables, Little Grasshopper Story. So let's say pause for a second. Let's get all the way back out. So you could watch that one over and over again just to figure out how to get to the content on the card. So if we create the card and no one knows how to get to it, it's worthless. So we made the little video so they, that one kid watches it one time, they'd have it. The adults maybe four or five times. And then what'll happen is in the future, they'll just open the phone. They won't watch any of this stuff in the app. They'll go straight to the education material. And the nice thing is there's huge amounts of content. So I'll do it manually for you. I'll go, let's get me out of here. Out of here. Let's, sorry, let's go back for a second. Let's go back. So this is again my phone. And now instead of using a little app, I'm going to do what the example was. I'm going to go to this. This is a file explorer. It, it's some way to get to this SD card. I'm going to go to the SD card. And then there's lots of uh, folders, which would be confusing. So if they can get down to this one that says list. I'll go list one and it has to use something to show the list. So I, in the future, you would say always for the example, I'm saying just once. Now what's happening is I'm, um, let's see if, how do I, oh, there, I can use my fingers over here. So if I zoom in, all of this content is on the phone, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos with all different kinds of topics like Voice of America, Special English, Khan Academy, Crash Course, Math, Science, English. Um, they always ask me to teach them English. So I put a bunch of uh, English examples in here. Here's a citizenship test for the, the local ones, local refugees trying to become citizens. Uh, so let's say we go down here and let's go English. Actually, let's go back up for a second. Let's go. We're just looking through lists. We like we like Aesop's fable. So here's a, an Aesop's fable. We touch it. It plays. And on their phone, they hear sound. They turn it sideways. They see it in full screen. And then let's go back. And back and back and back. So... What will happen in the end is they'll open their phone and pretty much they'll always just go to the content that's on the SD card. And the way they're going to get to that content is they're going to, however they want, but I, I gave them this, these two apps uh, on the card. They can go inside here, they go inside the SD card, and then they're just looking for the thing that says list. So these guys are the list ones. Uh, down below is a bunch of, is four or five pictures describing content. So I'm going to go list one, and this time I'll just say always. We'll never see it again. So in the future, it'll come to this screen, and all of these are video content or PDF files with education material from multiple sources uh, all the way down. Let's just so you can see the bottom down to here. So huge amounts of content. We don't really know exactly what they want, so we gave them a little bit of science, a little bit of math. Uh, lots of English because they, people that I've met seem to want to learn English. Um, and then in the future, you could use different content once the idea worked. So this was just me choosing what people have asked me for as I volunteered in the last 
30 years. Uh, we'll pause for a second. Like, any questions so far from anybody out there? Okay. I have a question. Well, first, I want to comment that this is so much clearer now that you explain it than when I looked last night on my, my phone. So I'm grateful. Thank you, Frank. Um, this isn't so much a question of, about the actual, um, um, you know, process of what you're doing, but I'm wondering, we, it's being recorded. Uh, do you know how people would access that if they're not on this meeting? Well, the logic will be, um, multiple logics. One logic would be, we put the examples on YouTube so that people know it exists, the people with internet know it exists. And then we put the content onto this Earth uh, Teamwork website. So if they didn't know how to get to a card themselves, they could pull the contents down from Earth Teamwork and put it on their own card. Once they understood the process, they can build any content they want. Like mine's just example content. Mm -hmm. So we're mostly proving that it's possible. And then somebody else could say, no, I want to teach art or I want to teach, I want to teach whatever. I, like on here, we have a whole bunch of health examples, how do viruses spread? How do you clean your hands? It could be that Doctors Without Borders wanted to use this example to only do medical. So our example is to, sh is to get them to think a new way and realize they could be helping them. Like, don't send dictionaries. Don't try to send big equipment in. It gets stuck everywhere. The kid never gets these, the thing you thought they were going to get. So our, my logic would be show Rotary how it works. Rotary is in every major city around the world. And Rotary could be um, copying this content or they could just substitute in their own content locally. But once the idea started to work, like every time you look on TV and these, there's refugees trapped in camps for years doing nothing, they could have been learning. Or I go to the middle of Africa all the time and the school has no books. Like you can't really fix the school or the books, but you could get a $5 card that had more content than the entire library of the town. So it's, um, you could pull it down from Earth Teamwork eventually. You the easy way in the beginning would be just copy a card that already exists. So if you could, if we got uh, one of these example cards, just make a thousand copies. And the nice thing is uh, I can, let's say Ethiopia, um, there's a village day, market day. So everybody's spread out. Then on market day, they all come to one location to buy and sell things. If one person was at market day with this content, the other ones could content copy what they thought was important. So if they thought, how does COVID spread or how do you prevent COVID? The person with the phone and the content could just share that video with everybody that was at market day. And then it bounces back to every village um, without internet access. So it's, we're proving that it works and we're trying to connect it to Rotary so that it would be, if they wanted it, it's in every major, every major city. I'm also trying through the Methodist church because they actually go volunteer everywhere also. So if you had multiple groups that understood it, then um, once it starts to spread, it can spread by itself. It's just nobody imagines this solution in the beginning. Like they just, they think it's only a phone and you're supposed to talk on it. The way I see it, it's a small tablet and you can bypass the internet by putting the content on the micro SD card. The problem is the first time you see it, you don't know what to do. Like what you saw last night. Like you don't, since you don't have the, since it's never been done like this, nobody thinks to do it when they're looking, except for small children. So there's still a chance that if this was in the middle of nowhere, a small child would figure it out because they would click on everything until they found what they wanted. Um, does that kind of answer like? Uh, yes, what, absolutely. What, that explains a lot. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. So once it starts to spread, everybody else will just add their own content. Once they get the idea and they'll stop trying to ship large, like I volunteer with Tibetan refugees and they, the Western people send them these books in their libraries and they, they'll take the books. There was a huge amount of shipping costs. Then there was all kinds of customs problems. Then the thing actually arrives in the school and nobody uses that book, but they won't throw the book out because it was a gift. So what happens is the shelves get consumed by a bunch of donated books that are used for photo opportunities 
but no one's reading any of those books. So it didn't really educate anybody. It made different people feel good. But if you actually went to that school and volunteered in the middle of nowhere, that book has never been touched. So you could, you can stick like there's encyclopedias and multiple encyclopedias and dictionaries on that little card and they can use it if they want to. Um, but it's not taking up space in their library. Okay. So that that's the beginning introduction. That's the content part. It turns out that there's also really useful education apps. Like they, the whole world is building Android apps to teach children how to do things, which also teaches adults how to do things. The problem is those apps are on the internet. And if you're in the middle of nowhere, you can't get the app to your phone. So besides just videos on here, I put Android apps. And it turns out you can, they're like Word has a DOC file and Excel has an XLS file. Uh, an Android app is an APK file. So if, if you know that you can do them offline, what you do is you go find the really good ones that are free so you don't get in trouble. And then the, you distribute the free ones on the card and then they can choose what they want to install. So on my screen, I have about 10 that are super useful if you're um, trying to teach a class. Like I teach them how to do drawing. I teach them how to do word processing and spreadsheets, but maybe they only care about learning the colors or learning the ABCs or learning how to like, there's a cute one about fruit where you can, uh, it shows you the pictures and then you have to guess the right word that goes with it. So these are the standard apps that are on this phone. But if I go inside here, inside this file explorer and I get inside the card again, besides just this list of, oopsie, sorry, can't click on it. Besides just the list, there's actually here it says um, apps one, apps two, apps three. Apps one are the ones that are on the screen already the standard ones that, that I would put on every phone. These apps too, is if you had the internet, you could use these. So probably they'll never use those. Like Zoom, like they can't use Zoom because they can't get to the internet. Um, down here is the educational apps. And so I, what I did is I, I tested thousands of them because they all say they work offline, but they don't. So I, I downloaded them all, I installed them all, and then I tested them without internet to make sure that they actually worked. And these are the ones that would work in the middle of nowhere without any, um, anything extra needed. So for example, if I go in fruit and vegetable, each one of these is a, an Android app that if they had the internet, they could have downloaded, but they don't have the internet. So if I touch one of these, I'm, I'm on the phone right now. If I touch one, it'll say, do you want to install this app? And it might say unknown source because the phones have a security setting. If it says unknown, you can just say, I don't care and it'll install it. So here I'm gonna install it. And now it's, it's taking the uh, installation app that was on the phone or the, that was inside this micro SD card and it's installing it into the phone. Now, if I say open, I'm inside the app. Then whatever the app does, like, uh, let's just say, uh, I'll just say learn and I'll say learn easy. Oh, this one's in Hindi. So it would speak to you. It has the word on the bottom and it's describing the object. So if you were teaching English as a second language, they would actually be learning without an accent, correct pronunciation. And they could practice all day long if that's what they cared about. Let's say back, back, back. Actually, let's just exit this out. Get a little farther out, exit uh, that. And then what it did is it put it out here on, oops, uh, I can't click on things, sorry. It put the app on the phone now. So there was the idea where you just look at a bunch of videos. There's also the idea that there's great educational apps out there, but they can't get to the app. So the same person that had the fast internet went and found the apps that were useful for whatever topic they cared about. And then we stick them on the phone. And then it turns out, if you're the one teaching English, let's go here, this fruit and vegetable ones. If you're teaching English, you could just install all the apps that say taught fruit or taught prepositions or taught whatever. So we're, we'll just install the second app and we'll say open it. And then 
Now it's on the phone. And if I say I want to learn fruit and berries using here pictures, we like pictures, then it gives you a word, shows you some pictures and it tests you. So you didn't really need an English teacher. They have the same thing for math and for science. So it could just be one Rotarian who went on holiday, brought the little cards with them and spread them. And once they existed in one phone, then they could spread to other phones. And the local person could say, oh, no, no, I'm more interested in uh, what do you do if there's no doctor in your village? Or like, I'm interested in saving animals. Like how, what kind of the stuff do you do for medical for animals? And there's pretty much one example of everything on that card. So once they got the idea, they just pull off what they want. If they decide they don't want the other stuff, just delete it and they have empty space. So let's jump back to the beginning. Let's jump all the way out. And let's say, uh, well, no. So we, we still have the phone. So anything else that would matter here. So this apps one was the apps that were on the front screen that I would put on every phone. Two was if they had the internet, they could use these. Three was hundreds of education apps that they could install onto their phone. Uh, anything else? These other folders are the content that you see when you click on list one and list two. So instead of trying to teach them how to go into every folder, I made these little lists. And these little lists are showing, like if, if I click on this one that says list one, and it shows this big, here you can't read it if I zoom in. If it shows, uh, these are the little folders that we were just looking at. Like there was a folder named English. And then inside it were all these other folders. And if you went down, this is what's inside the folder. So instead of trying to teach them uh, how to look in every one of these folders, I just made this little uh, list. It's actually a, a web page, this little local page that shows the contents of everything else. Okay, so we'll stop for questions again. Just so first one was about videos. This was about apps. Any questions about the app, the, the idea of the apps? Okay, so there's great apps. People can't get to them because they don't have the internet. So we put the great apps on the micro SD card also. And let's go back. We'll go back again. And what we're looking at is my phone shared onto a, a computer screen, which also turns out to be really helpful when you can't read your phone screen and you want to use a keyboard. Let's see if I can get out. So I'm going to get out. I'm going to go back to the first screen. And this was my first screen. So on, on the, which is called your home screen, there's this little app that's just showing them videos. And then it turns out these are the standard apps that are installed on the phone. So I'll just show you one or two of these standard apps. I'll, I'll, I'll just describe them to you. So the clock one is, um, I found that measuring success, the best thing was measuring time. So if I give the kids a task to do, I, time, I tell them to time themselves. And then in a week, they should be faster. So something like type the alphabet. They should, they're going to be terrible at typing the alphabet the first week, but every week they should be getting faster. So you have an objective measure of whether they're learning anything. It would be the same for each one of these examples, like draw a picture. I have a standard picture. How long does it take you to draw it? After three weeks, you should be able to draw it much faster. If everybody's drawing at the same speed, they learned nothing. So right now people go and they talk in a room and it looks really great, but it doesn't mean the kid learned anything. So to measure things, it would be by time. And to do time, I, this little clock does a stopwatch. So I just teach the kids, time yourself. And they actually get really competitive about how fast they can do things. So I don't even have to be watching them. I just have to say, well, I ask a few of them, what was your time? Also, whenever I do a boring thing, I say, whoever finishes first can play a game. So they finish first so they can get to the games, like chess or checkers, not, not like real not games where you're shooting anybody, games where you get to play and learn. Um, so the first one was a clock. The second one here, if I click on it, is a map of the entire world. You can zoom down to your actual street. But in, in the basic installation is, yeah, let's say we don't, uh, I have to turn the connection on once. So just to get the example, oops, I got to go back there. So this is a map of the entire world. 
and you can zoom in and out um, down to countries and down to cities without any special stuff. But uh, if you want to get all the way down to your house, you have to install your local area. So in general, they're not going to have that in the beginning. They're just going to, you could say, go find Italy, go find Rome, go find New York. And they would be learning geography from just that one app. And let's see if we can get, uh, for example, I'll zoom in on Europe. So this would, in essence, give them an interactive globe of the planet using just this app, which is called Maps.me. And it actually turns out to be extremely uh, useful in countries without maps. Like when I travel places, I bring the map, I bring this with me, and then I can see what's in the local town and the local people can't even see what's in the local town. It's also good for uh, traveling. I, I mark wherever I am and then I can wander around in the woods for hours. And then I say, go home and I can see how to go home. So it, it turns out to be um, useful for many reasons, but I would start with the kids just learning, uh, can you find the major places on earth? So that's one app. The first one was a clock. The second one was this little map guy. The third one is just chess. So they think it's a game and they like to sit and play. So go away, go away. And on this phone, I didn't install stuff. So I, the first time I have to say yes a lot. So it would turn out next time I don't answer any of these questions. It would just, uh, it would just jump to play. So here's a little chess game. And I only put in games where you have to think chess, checkers, something where your mind is working. So that was the third example. Oops, we'll actually give up on the match and exit. And let's exit all the way. So, and the next one is voice recording. So you can do little recordings if you wanted to share them with the rest of the world. So that guy records your voice. The next one lets you make little videos. So most of the time in the villages, I have the kids to record their day. Like, what is your normal day? And uh, it's amazing what their normal day is compared to a normal day outside. But I have them make a video like when they say, oh, breakfast, video what you ate for breakfast, because it's not what uh, Western Rotarian thinks is breakfast. Or when you brushed your teeth, what did the bathroom look like? And it's not anything that you would imagine. So. If you just list text, everyone thinks that it's the same world you're living in. But when the little kid makes a video of their day, you get to see um, reality. Uh, next one is Zender. The name doesn't matter. It's just a way of two phones sharing without the internet. The bottom left one is a camera. And what I do is I use a standard camera app. So no matter what phone you have, you're using the same camera. Otherwise, it's really hard to teach a class and explain to people how, how to do things. Next one is a library that um, shows all the books that are on your phone in an organized way. So if I touch on this one, sadly, I, uh, it's right from the beginning. So it's gonna, it might take a second to set up. So here, the, it went and it found the books that were on this phone. So there's the Mooncatcher book. There's a Doctors with No Borders. There's Women with Disability. So instead of them searching around to try to find whatever was on this card, they would go to this little library and it'll go look on the card and then show it to them here. So like down here for blind children or deaf children, turns out lots of places I went, they were just considered cursed. You never saw them. They were trapped in their house forever. So there's huge numbers of activities in PDF format. The problem with PDF is you have to know how to read. So it turns out videos are actually much better, but that is one of the apps sitting on the front screen. Edge. And then we're almost done. The next one is how to explore. This lets you look inside your phone. And all we really care about is how do you look inside your SD card? And then next. Uh, never. Next one is the little dots. This turns out to be every app that's on the phone, but I didn't show them on the front screen because some of them you'll never need. But it is a way for you to, to see. Um, not just the ones that are on the front screen, but everything that's on the phone. So this shows you everything on the phone. It also is useful when they destroy the front screen because you can go here and then drag them back to the front screen. Uh, next one is just a little painting program. And we use this one all the time in every class because to know how to draw means you have to know how to use a menu and how to use your finger and the mouse. 
So, and everybody knows if they drew something correctly or incorrectly. So I always have them draw the same thing in every example. Uh, let's see, we'll make it big and fat and we'll change it to some color. So you have them learn how to draw stuff. And this would be an example of them timing. You would say, here's the picture, how many seconds to do this? Then every kid in the room rushes to be first. But what you're really teaching them is how to use the mouse, how to use the apps, how to use their fingers. And uh, if they can get really good at drawing stuff, they're really good in all the other programs because they, they now know how to select. And then I tell them, you have to be able to save it and find it. So it looks like a stupid program, but graphics programs are really useful from the beginning and they don't require any language. We'll jump out of that one. Let's see. And then the last one here is WPS. This is a free, in essence, word processing presentation and spreadsheet program. So it would be a very useful skill for them to learn how to do word processing or spreadsheets because you can get a job immediately. The problem is you can't put Microsoft Word on a phone for free. So if, if I go, for example, in here, I click on the little WPS guy and I'll click on this little plus. And then he says, if you want to add something and I'll, this, the first one would be a, a Word document, then a PowerPoint, then a spreadsheet. So let's say I go to Word. It's not really Word, but it's equivalent blank. And then if I'm inside here, I would have the kids type the alphabet. So can you get into a Word document? Can you type the alphabet? Can you save it? And then can you find it? And that, that set of functions you would time and then hopefully next week they would be faster. And then you could even compare two schools or two different countries because it's the same alphabet. Okay, so we're, we did lots of content. Remember, it doesn't matter. All the details don't matter. We made little videos of each one. What matters is the general idea. There's a phone. Let's jump all the way back to here and here. So jumping back just to the first picture. This is our first picture. And what we want to do is get to this phone here at the end. And this phone at the end has a micro SD card. Card costs $5. It's filled with content. And if you don't have the card, you, in theory, could go to that website, pull down the stuff that you thought was useful, dump it on the card, and share it with whoever you wanted or change the content to something you cared more about. Because it, it turns out I had to delete lots of stuff. Like I could do the beginning of math, but I couldn't do all of math. And I could do the beginning of science, but I couldn't get all of science to fit. So the card works as a um, generic teaser for introduction to everything. And I went really heavy on English as a second language because we were going to use it with the refugees here in Albany. And then if you wanted, you could learn the beginning steps so it wasn't magic. Like in the beginning, somebody had to find the content and pull it down onto a computer from the internet. I wouldn't spend the time creating the content because there's tens of thousands of better videos than you'll ever make out there. Just pick the ones that are copyright free. Or in this case, we're uh, only using for educational purposes and not profit. So you you have the option of, um, there's, a, there's a copyright word for it, but uh, f educational fair use. So you didn't take all of their content, you took some of it and you're only using it for educational purposes. And it's not competing with them because the, the location it's going to has no internet. So they never went able, been able to see your content to start with. Okay, so in the beginning, somebody pulled it down, dumped it on a computer, organized it, put it on a card. Everybody else in the world can just take the card and mail it to their friends or copy the card. And in the end, the card by itself is worthless. You stick it in a phone. If you had a laptop or a computer, it turns out you can, you can, there are ways you can put this into a laptop or a computer also. So if, if you were lucky enough or rich enough to have a laptop, this would also work in your laptop. Um, okay. So we'll ask any questions so far. Okay, so we, we all, like, we're experts. We got it all. <laughs> and then, no, let's go. No, excuse, excuse me. We are not really expert, and I think this is absolutely wonderful because of all the, this is Milan Butler speaking, of all the revolution, uh, technology is the single one that very, very poor 
countries have been able to take advantage of. Therefore, something like that is just simply extraordinary. My only regret is that I always go to bed so late and I miss the beginning of it. But I'm going to study that from A to Z and I will probably get in touch with you if you don't mind. Um, Alaska, if you don't mind, I will just like, if I miss anything, I will probably reach out to you. I think this can be a life saver for uh, some of the people in third world uh, countries, but it's it's so easy to grab they put their time and their little photo it and it's it's wonderful. It's a blessing to us. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not sure you. if I was able to be heard because when I stop I don't hear could you hear me, uh, Alaska? Can people hear me? Yes, we can Hello. hear. Sometimes it breaks up from bad internet. So it's I'm, in terms of missing things. Don't worry, the people that were here, it's too fast for everyone anyway. <laughs> it's, it, it's just a, the introduction to the idea. And I, I, I agree. Like in in Ethiopia, or sorry, in Kenya, they the the government actually put computer labs in every school, but they didn't give them any content. So they spent a lot of money, but the kid doesn't learn anything. So even this little card into a country that started to do resources would be amazing. And any other comments or questions so far? Because, okay, so we're almost out of time. I'm going to go back. Um, and is there anything else we care about? Just, here's a local example. Uh, the concept in my mind is the way wishflower seeds or dandelion seeds move in the wind. They land in the middle of nowhere and they can still grow and then they can bounce to the next middle of nowhere. It would be the same content for the or the same concept for these little cards. If you got one of these little cards to the right person in any country, it'll spread by itself. They don't have to know the beginning. All they have to have is a card and copy it. And they they can buy cards in their country or Someone like in India, I can use Amazon India from United States, have it have objects delivered the next day to the middle of India. So I didn't have to use uh, cust I can go around customs, I can go around mailing, I can go around everything and just click order and have it delivered. And I don't have to understand what a card is. I could just say, this is really nice. I'm going to send you 10. Uh, and then you're going to find some smart kid in your neighborhood and that kid, you're going to stick it in a phone and the kid will figure it out. What I did here was I, I use these phones. These are uh, track phones, total wireless and simple mobile. And they sell an, an amazing phone for $29. And they think that you're going to connect it and use it for a real phone. I, I bought 70 of them. I'm not going to connect them ever. I'm going to use them as little tablets. And then we take these and let the refugee kids, local ones, use them for practice. And we kind of set that first screen up so it's frozen. So it's very hard to destroy the first screen of the phone. Uh, and if they do, all of those apps are actually on the card so they could just reinstall them on the front part of the phone. So we'll do one last idea and then we'll say we're done. The last idea would be a library. So here, what I'm gonna try with the refugees is get the, meth the Rotary and the uh, Rotarians and the Methodist church held by the phones. I'm going to try to store the phones at the Methodist church and then have those volunteers, they just, uh, they can rotate in and out. So when they go to volunteer at the local refugee place, bring some new phones, take the phones that are broken and bring them back. And then we'll get one person who just knows how to install apps and they can just install the app so the phone returns to normal. So the local teacher wouldn't have to know how phone, like how to fix a phone. Local teacher would just say, Go to video number two, we're learning prepositions today. And when they're learning, for example, English, they won't be learning the accent of the teacher. They would be learning the native speaker's pronunciation because it's super depressing to go to countries and listen to the children perfectly speak like the teacher, but the teacher can't speak English. 
So it's much nicer if they actually learned, um, if they're going to spend their time learning, end up with a good outcome. So this little thing would be an example library, like rotaries could sponsor the libraries. They could exist somewhere and then the phones just get lent out and then brought back. So they never really get given to anybody because then they get, they disappear. But if it's kind of like you can use it for a month or whatever, I, I would say you could use it. And I want to see a, an outcome measure. Like, did you get faster teaching the alphabet? Then you can borrow the phones again. If it turns out you never use the phones for anything, then we lend the phones to someone else. So it could be something like a lending library at um, every Rotary worldwide that lent them out into the local community. And then the idea would spread once it got into the community. Maybe the, the school would never think of it themselves, but if the Rotarian went and said, oh, here's the idea. Do you have one smart kid? I'm gonna, the one smart kid's gonna show the other smart kids. So that's the, there's a whole bunch of text describing it, but the, the general logic would be the card is $5. We can get the card anywhere in the world without customs problems. And the card contains the apps that you can use and it contains the videos that you can share and they can copy them themselves without internet. So in theory, it could spread worldwide. Plus they can modify it to, if they don't like this content, they modify it for some other content. All right, so whatever ideas you remember are good. Um, and I put it on YouTube, I put it on Earth Teamwork, I tried to make a little app that I can, I can make the, I have the little app, but I, the Google play store has 9 million rules. So it's taking a while for it to show up on the Google play store because then we could just tell people download the app. It, it won't have the content, but it would show them the ideas. So then if they were motivated, they could say, yeah, we're going to, we'll track down Lon Pena or Frank and ask them a question. Okay. So that leaves like, like one extra minute for questions. And any other questions? Frank, this is Bruce McConley. Uh, the new theme for Rotary is imagine. Uh -huh. And just imagine what we could do. Yeah, we could touch the whole world. Exactly. I just have to make it simple enough that others will share it. <laughs> But it, it, it's a, the idea is great, and it doesn't requ requires almost no resources compared to what's currently being spent, like to ship a dictionary. You, you could have shipped 100 cards for that. Any, any other thoughts? Well, thank you, Frank. I, I, you know, as someone who looked at it last night, on the things you sent and, and just was overwhelmed and thought, oh my gosh, I'll never get this. Now I feel like I kind of understand and I'm excited about it. I really, I'm really excited. I think it's wonderful. So thank you for sharing uh, yeah, thank all you. your knowledge about this. Yeah, if it, if it just stays in my head, it goes nowhere. So without like local champions, it won't move anywhere. If it just starts to move, I think it's unstoppable. I think it'll start to move. I can't imagine that it that it wouldn't. Uh, well, I we'll, hope so. Thank you. Thank you.